fishing freaks, if you are interested in powering your boat, the simplest and easiest way that I can think of, I'm gonna show you in today's video, working on the silver bullet. Let's go. So maybe you're watching this video and you've experienced maybe power issues with your trolling motor, that's probably most common or maybe you're experiencing some graph issues, you're getting your graphs cutting out in and out or something like that. Uh, that happens all the time with batteries. So the system that I'm gonna show you is the one that, that I really like. It's similar to the one I ran in my last Silver Bullet, but this one has uh, a new charging system that I love. And we're going to be installing something that I have never seen anybody put into a bass boat. Uh, to monitor this stuff and to make sure that everything's working right. So let's get over to the boat. Let's get started. First of all, shout out to Pro Guide for hooking me up with some, some batteries and the charging system that I'm going to show you guys. I've run Pro Guides for the last few years. Great products, great company, but they have a new charging system that I think is amazing and they have a new tech in their batteries. But if you like this setup and you want to redo your boat, the way that, that mine is right here, this exact setup that I'm gonna show you will be at Pro Guy's website. And you can look for my Lake Fork Guy logo, it's right there. And you can literally get the same setup that I've got. They've got it all put together in a, in a package for you. But if you guys aren't gonna run big graphs or a turret like I am, or you know I'm charging batteries, I'm putting a, a, a cooler on my boat, and I'm using extra power, this is the 31. AGM, this thing right here packs a punch. The 31s are, are full of power, and honestly, if you if you aren't running a lot of extra stuff, you're good with just the one. And that's the power your motor, that's the power your, your live wells, your electronics, all of your accessories, all that stuff. I'm gonna be running two, and I'm gonna show you guys how to run a parallel setup, regardless if you have, you know, this new pro guide set up or not you can you can power your boat this way and get some extra juice how to run in parallel look how many batteries i have on my boat right now one two now that's the agm that's running all the the motor accessories the only thing hooked up to this is the trolling motor and this is a 24 volt lithium when you are using more than 50 percent of the power in, a, in an agm you're actually damaging the battery so with lithiums, you can use dang near 100% of the power and get full voltage out of that until it's out. Now the other advantage you're gonna get is the weight reduction. And one of the greatest things about this Pro Guide lithium is that it Bluetooths to an app. They have a great app, I've been using it. It works very well. And you can monitor your battery with just that. So you can see exactly how much power you're using. You can see all the uh, the cycles that that you're going through you can see You know how much you can predict how much time you will have left on the water Although I, I don't think I'll ever run out of, of battery on a full day fishing with this one the pro guide has developed a multi chemistry Charging setup they have multiple different kinds of chargers to customize what you want in your boat So for this one, I have two banks you could charge multiple different setups with the different kinds of chargers. You don't have to run cables to every single battery anymore. And you don't have to select like what's an AGM and what is a lithium. You know, my last boat set up, I had a separate lithium charger because the, the regular three bank I had, it, it wouldn't put sufficient power into the lithium. So this will do both. It's smart, it's easy, you hook it up and it just works. And that's exactly what we all need. First step, y'all, disconnect everything from the battery, and I'm going to turn my power switches and my breakers off as well. By the way, this is what I mean about turning off the power switches. These babies right here, if you don't have those, just make sure you disconnect from the battery. And there's the breaker. So both of those are off. So now I'm just gonna disconnect the positive and the negative off this one battery that I've already hooked up. Now the Pro Guide batteries do come with these, the washers and the lock washers, but if you guys are just 
wanting to kind of work on your batteries, make sure everything's good, I'll give you two tips. Those lock washers are really helpful so you don't have to get back there every few trips, tighten things up. And then another thing that I use is Corrosion X. You can spray that stuff right on your terminals, on your boards, like anything where you have electronics. And that stuff lasts a very long time, especially if it's not getting a lot of moisture to it, a lot of water, direct water to it. And it will keep, it will prevent rusting. It will prevent rusting and just keep everything working smoothly as well. So um, those two things right there will prevent you from having to get into your battery bay. When you're digging into your batteries and you're going to disconnect them, take you some masking tape or whatever kind of tape. Take one side of your terminal and tape it up. If you want to get crazy with it, you can label both of your wire sets. But sometimes we have jumpers that are just black wires that connect to positive. So if you're working on your boat and you're not sure how everything is wired, before you take everything off, go ahead and tape up one side at least so you know that needs to go back to positive or that needs to go back to negative, everything else, go see the to the other terminal. Now, what is going to be separating this boat from most boats that you have ever seen and most boats that I have ever worked on is I'm going to be installing this right here. This is a Victron shunt. So I've installed one of these on my, on my camper. It allows me to monitor what is coming in and what is going out of my battery, which is really important, important when you're camping. You wanna know how much power you're putting in with your solar controller and your panels. But more importantly, I'm gonna be able to monitor what's, what's coming out. So the other pro guide battery is lithium and it has a Bluetooth system in it, basically a shunt inside that allows me to look at it with my, my pro guide app and I can see what I'm using and how much power I'm pulling down. It's happened to all of us, and you probably know somebody where, you know, they can run through a battery like in a year, or I mean, two years. These batteries should last longer than that, but with the electronics that we're putting on boats now and just the not understanding. I mean, as fishermen, we, we do everything we can to like learn how to catch fish, but understanding our boats is another thing. I'm guilty of it. I'm sure a lot of us are. And the good thing about me doing this video is I'm sure some of you are gonna leave comments, making suggestions that might be even better or tell me something that I'm doing wrong. I'm not good at this. I like learning about it though. If I'm ever in a pinch, I'll be able to fix it. I'll understand it. I like having that knowledge. But if you guys just wanna get this stuff, take it to an electronic expert, that is perfectly, perfectly fine too. And you know, maybe a great idea, but if you don't want to spend the money, uh, th this is, I'm just showing you a really easy way to, to power everything up, make everything simple. And another thing coming from overlanding and camping is pretty much everybody runs bus bars because you're running a lot of electronics um, and you want to be able to monitor everything and hook everything up cleanly to your terminals. And uh, what a bus bar allows you to do is hook multiple things up and not, not get, you know, just junked up on on one terminal my my terminal here on my my victron is 3 8 the battery terminals are 5 16 so this is running 5 16 terminals all the loads all the chargers need to run through this in order for me to understand what is really being pulled and so what we're going to do is we're going to hook all this up and i'm going to go out and simulate a, a full power day on the water uh, running live wells, running the electronics, uh, charging stuff up and see how much power that we're actually draining out of our batteries. Because without this, you really don't know. But like I said, on the Pro Guide Lithium, it's already built in. It's the easy button for it. So I'm just doing this so I can monitor the two AGMs. All right, we're basically inside the hole here. And where I'm gonna mount the Victron is right here. And that bus bar, That's gonna come right over here. And this will be right by my other battery negatives. So I'm only gonna be having to move my negatives, you know, a few inches. And that's a nice convenient place to mount everything.
A little bit of water just came out of there. That's interesting. No, oh, it looks pretty tight, but it's actually really open back here compared to most floats I've had. There we go. Nice and tight. Obviously, I'm using stainless here, guys. I think that's a given, but you know. We all make mistakes. Don't do a whole lot of work like this upside down. I'm feeling like MacGyver here. Need more power. There we go. All right. That is going nowhere. So in order to get this distance correct I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and I have already uh, made up these cables using six gauge wire and lugs um, 5 16 going to 3 8 if you guys are not familiar with that um, doing that um, it's fine you can literally order these parts off Amazon do this stuff yourself the only thing that I will say is like kind of a must. You could use a vise, but getting some um, some lug crimpers that's really going to go a long way for you. All right, that is going to that's going to be nice right there. That's going to be very nice. So it's a little working room. Another tip when you're cleaning out your boat, try to take these little squigglies of whatever plastic metal stuff you're working on. If you find any Cinco's or anything back there, you know, you know what happens. You go in the drain plug and they're stuck, stuck forever. Something else to note on this Victron unit that I'm using is that you know, the one I used on my camper was a different model. Um, they have a newer model that is better suited for moist environments. Because a lot of people use these on the outside of their campers or ba if their batteries are outside or something. Um, they come up with that solution to use this model. And it is, we're going to see, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be suitable for marine environments. As long as it's mounted up top here, not like in the water, we should be fine. But I'll leave a link for this as well. You just want to make sure you get this one if you guys are going to get it. Need more power. Connect that, tighten that up. There is a torque setting on this that I don't know, but I'm just getting it fairly snug. Negatives. This is coming off. All right, that is clean. I like the way that turned out. So we got all of our negatives hooked up to that bus bar. That bus bar is going to the Victron, and the Victron is going to the negative of that one battery. So essentially the Victron is acting as the negative. So we're gonna put the, uh, the battery back in place, and then everything that was hooked up to the positive will just go right back on to this positive lead on the battery. Now, one thing I, I need to mention, you guys, is a very important step. So, the negative for this charger bank, all right, this is 12 volts. The negative is going to that bus bar back there, okay? But the positive 
is not going to go to this battery. It's going to go over here. And that is going to be able to put juice in the batteries evenly. That's the way Pro Guide has told me to do it. Uh, I've even talked to uh, Vexus, some of the guys over there, and they have helped me out on this. Hook it on the negative there. It's going to go over here to this negative. Same thing with the positive. We're just going to have to make up, go make a cable. That's going to be, let's see, that's around eight inches. So about a foot, about a foot long cable. What we're going to do right now is going to go make up a red cable to jump positive to positive. And I'll show you how I do that with, uh, with the lug crimps and all that. So let's head to the garage. We're using six gauge. So the next thing that we're going to do is take a, uh, a little cutting utensil here. And we're going to strip the ends off of this. Now using six gauge is pretty thick. So you might have to use a knife or something like that. You can totally do that, that's fine. Just be careful not to cut your wires. Don't wanna be doing that. Now what you have to do on your ends is get a matching lug. All right, well, as it turns out, in my nicely organized box of lugs and such, I don't have any of the 5 16 in the six gauge left, so I'm just gonna use the 3 8 Should be close enough. And I'm going to use a crimping tool, which we have right here, to smash down these ends, and you wanna make them solid. And then we're gonna be adding a sleeve over the end and we're just going to heat shrink that down, make sure everything is, uh, is watertight. First connection going to positive battery over here is going to go to this pot is the positive end on this battery now for the love of Peter Pan if you're going to do these in parallel make sure you don't cross those wires because if you went negative to positive and flip-flopped them that's going to be in a series and that's going to give you 24 volts we're running 12 volts Parallel. All right, we got all our positive connections back on, except for, don't forget, the charger. So one is going to negative. The other is going to the positive over here on this battery. That way they're both getting charged. So the only thing left to do now is take our negative jumper and hook up our negative to negative in our parallel. Hook it on. And then we'll just put our, our washer, lock washer, and our nut on. I knew I was forgetting something. The Victron power. The Victron power, okay. So we're gonna back out on the positive end of this battery and we're gonna connect that positive there. And for the final touch, the last wire that I haven't connected yet is to the bus bar and the Victron. So that is the final wire. Let's see if we got hot action here. Okay, hey, that's gonna be this one. Now I see the Victron blinking, so it's got power. Let's review. Let's review, class. Now, first of all, I'm loving how clean this makes the wires, but let's look at the bus bar under here. 
All right, so we got all of our negatives going to the bus. That going to uh, the Victron. The Victron, again, is acting as our negative. So that negative uh, cable is going to the negative on this battery. And then all of our positives, almost all of our positives, are going to uh, the positive terminal here, except for the charger and the, uh, the Victron um, intermediate monitor, and then we have our jumpers. So positive, positive, negative, negative. I'm gonna go to my Victron app that I already use for the camper, so I wanna see if this pops up. There's a code, our pin, I forgot about the pin. I ended I under up just putting a bunch of zeros in. It says, you are connected using a default Bluetooth pin. We recommend you change. And we have voltage, uh, not pulling any current right now. So let's go ahead, as you guys see that, 100% power. Now I need to, I need to teach it what 100% power is. So after I leave this on the charger all night and both batteries are charged, then I can come back in here and reset at 100% and it'll know what it is. But just to test that um, we are monitoring power, let's go ahead, power the boat on and see what's being drawn. Breaker on, power on. Now let's see if the boat has power. I hear the bilge running. All right. Nav lights, uh, anchor lights, Okay, now it says I'm pulling 0.41 amps, five watts. That's hardly anything. Let's kick on the bilge. Okay, now we're pulling a total of 14 watts. So the next step that we're gonna do, I'm gonna get all this stuff inputted. We're gonna go out on the lake. We're gonna turn everything on and we're gonna see what we draw down on here. And then I'll turn on the Pro Guide app as well. Oh yeah, one more thing can't forget about charging. Let's plug it in and see what happens. So current going in right now is 9.6. It's a 10 amp charger, so that makes total sense. the water test guys this is where uh, the butter makes the cream if you know what I mean I gotta address one thing that I screwed up on I did doing a little research last night the um, the accessory wire the gray accessory wire that goes to the the second battery basically off the Victron uh, that will not work on a uh, parallel system only in a series to, to monitor the midpoint. So I just, I took it off. So I let the batteries charge all night, they're full. And what I did was I went into the, uh, the app and uh, I've got the, the discharge floor at 50% because we're using an AGM. The battery capacity is, is 200 amp hours. So each battery is 100 amp hours. We have two of them. So the big thing that I needed to do was go in here and uh, reset the state of charge to, to 100%. So the battery knows uh, after I unplugged it, let it sit for about an hour, and um, then that's, that state of charge is set to, to 100%. If we just go into our Pro Guide, our Pro Guide app right here, uh, 27.06. So we're going to look at both of these. Uh, the Pro Guide is going to this 24 volt lithium and the Victron is going uh, to these right here. So let's start cutting some stuff on. So I just plugged in our fridge to our uh, DC cigarette lighter port right there and it is drawing around three amps. Let's cut some more stuff on. Let's cut the electronics on. All systems go. Now we're pulling about five amps, so we added, you know, one amp, one amp a piece. And let's see what happens when I go to start the motor. 
because I am floating away currently. So let's see what happens here. Oh, so there was a big, big push right there. I don't know if you guys saw it on the crank and amps. And now we are positive. See how it's putting voltage into the battery? So we're, we're putting in like 18 to 20 amps right there. Okay, now it's coming down a little bit. Well, that is really cool to see. That is really cool. All right, we're gonna turn the motor off. Check it, okay, and then we just went back to negative. See, that we're pulling, it's gonna settle around six amps right now. So let's cut on our, let's cut on our uh, live well. Okay, we got live well going. So right now we're pulling around nine to 10 amps. Voltage and everything looks good. So let's, let's go simulate a fishing day and see how much we pull out of the trolling motor battery and the two cranking batteries that we now have in here. Look at that fat joker there. I think that's the fattest large mouth I've ever caught out here. My gosh, I need your genetics. Let you get back in the water, bud. Look at the potential on this unit here, guys. My goodness. Good luck, buddy. It's been raining, of course. It's just what it does now in monsoon season in Texas. So I've had I've had everything. Uh, my live well, my live well timer keeps going in and out, but um, I've had, I have everything going possible. I have the nav lights on. I have both graphs on. I have the live well going. I have the refrigerator going. I am charging currently my um, action camera batteries. So on the trolling motor, we've been just hustling around. I've got it on, you know, seven, seven, eight speed. Fish for 45 minutes or so. And we're at 97%. Okay, not bad. The dual 12 volt. Look at this. We even got graphs, graph readouts here. So we're at 98%. Per, I'm currently pulling 7.4 amps. It's probably because the fridge just kicked on. It's quite a bit. Like at that pace, guys, running all this stuff. It's still at 98%. It, it's a uh, it's a done deal. I'm not even gonna have to think about it. I won't ever have to think about it. Especially with uh, the motor putting in a little bit more voltage as it's running. I didn't even think about that. So I'm gonna do a little bit more fish and see if we could take this thing down maybe to like 90%. Um, but it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. The reason I really wanted to do this was in preparation for putting in new units. I'm gonna have new units with with live scope with turret with the you know with with the black box with both bigger graphs that's going to pull some more power you know you leave those puppies on all day and it does pull some power but i am i am just so confident in this system right here to get me through whatever kind of day i, I could do a 48 hour on the water fishing challenge which i owe you guys because i did a 24 hour you guys you guys liked it um, I've been saying I want, to, I want to do a 48, which is tough. 48 hours, truly, on the water. That's a lot. But I think I can get it done with this system. I'm going to keep cranking here and see if I can catch another Fatty McGee. Hello. Hello, big one on in the rain. Oh. Look at that fatty McDougal right there. My goodness. Nice three and three quarter, four pounder. Let you go on the thunder. He thunderstruck it. Another one. Love to see it.
we're back home. It's looking like we got another round of rain coming in. So I just wanna quickly share with you guys the results of today for about four or five hours of being on the water. It's my little buddy, just got a haircut. Let me get a high five. Wah-bam. Round and round it goes. So inside our fridge here, it is frosty cold. We'll go ahead and power that off. That thing ran all day, 45 degrees. All right, so our final results on the Trolla motor, we ended up, we're still at 87%. 87% there. And then on our two AGMs, 91%, guys. 91. Now, one last thing I want to show you. By the way, we were pulling, we were basically pulling no amps with the graphs being off. You know, that's that's a common issue is graphs pulling power and um, draining the batteries. That's why you have those master power switches, but I really didn't see any. So I'm just gonna plug this in. I'll plug it in real quick. Ah, this rain, dead gum. Needs to stop raining. And I will show you guys one last shot. So 9.6 right now. It's 9.6, that's gonna that's about right. It's for a 10 amp charger. So power is going back in. It's raining, guys. I gotta put the cover on. That coming. Think we're good think we're good on rain so we've had the boat plugged in now during the rain for a couple hours it's full it's full back up i think the lithium might be a, a hair shy and if i think i'm doing the math correctly if we would have had just one agm we would have gotten down to about 80 percent so basically double what we took out and still that would have been okay but once we add the new graphs and the turret and the live scope, then we're going to be pulling, we're going to be pulling some more amps uh, on the water. So two batteries to be safe, not hitting that 50% floor. I think we're going to be good to go. So I hope you guys learned a little something here. And uh, I love how simple this system is. Again, if you want to check out the pro guide batteries and the setup I'm using, that'll be linked down below. Also, if you want to pick up one of the Victron units that I was using, Again, I think that's the first time I've ever seen one used in a bass boat. I think it's really cool. And uh, if you guys want to put one in, I'll leave a link down below um, where you can get one. The, just make sure you get the one that, that's in the link, not the one that's not waterproof. It's also a, a good idea, whatever battery you're going with, to look up the, the settings. Make sure you have those, uh, those details right in whatever battery monitoring system you're using. That way you're getting a, a good readout and know exactly how much power is going out and coming back in. Um, I tried to do my best to explain everything, but I, I'm sure I missed something. So if you guys have any suggestions, things that could be better, something that I did wrong, let, let us know in the comments down below so we can all learn and be better. And in the meantime, I hope you're ripping lips and getting sniffs. I will see you guys back in the great outdoors on the next one.